We're going to be looking at tonight the millennial reign, the millennial reign. If you've noticed, if you've looked through your outline already, uh, you noticed I've given you the addresses again and not the, 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 the whole verses. We'll put them up on here. Uh, I just run out of space. I have five pages of notes I had to fit on two pages. And so we're going to try to go through as much as we can. And we really are not going to be able to get everything that I wanted to put down. Maybe uh, we might go into part two next week uh, or, or when we uh, teach on this again. I, I don't know. I don't want to promise that because God may have us talking about the great white throne judgment next time. I don't, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll try to get in as much as we can tonight. But there is a great blessing in knowing that Jesus is coming again. Amen. He is going to rule and reign on this earth. Uh, the prophecies of the Bible will come to pass. His word is sure, and everything he said that's going to happen will happen. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen. Last week, last week, we covered the, the, the truth of God preparing his people that are going to go into the kingdom. Those who have survived the tribulation period, uh, he's going to judge them. That's the separation of the sheep and the goats. How many of y'all remember that? Say amen. amen. And now he has got everybody ready, everybody that he wants in his kingdom, everybody that he has prepared to be in his kingdom, and now we're going to talk about the kingdom itself. So if you're ready for that, say amen. Revelation chapter number 20 and verse number 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now we could stop right there and say amen. amen. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. Judgment was given unto them. And I saw, now this is a different group, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, in which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ. How long? But the rest of the dead uh, lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his season or out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever." Amen. Amen. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the privilege and the honor it is to serve you. Lord, thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for the promises you've given us. Uh, thank you for the people that are here. Lord, they've worked all day long. They wore out and they're tired. And Lord, please let them be blessed tonight. Let them be, uh, uh, receive whatever they came for. I pray that you'll encourage them. I pray as we learn together and grow together. Lord, you'll edify them and help them, uh, strengthen them so that they can be prepared for what they have to do tomorrow. Lord, help us to be better Christians today than we were yesterday. Help us to become better Christians tomorrow than we were today. And God will praise you and thank you, give you the glory and the honor for it all. We praise you, Lord. And Lord, don't let me say anything I shouldn't. And please don't let me forget anything I should. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Control my mind, my thoughts, my words. And God, I'll praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'm, I'm going to have to go through this fast or we'll never finish. Uh, so, so just listen fast as you can. Amen. Uh, this has been a great study. I'm telling you, I, I, the more, it seems like the more I dig, the more it comes up and the more I learn and the more I see and the more I want to put down and 
And five pages in, Dustin came in to remind me we only had one hour. So uh, maybe we're going we're gonna to treat this like some bologna and just cut it off wherever we need to cut it off. And, you know, bologna, don't matter where you cut it off, it's good. Say amen. amen. We'll just go to our hour and stop there and, 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 and maybe finish the rest uh, next time. But Revelation 20 is a, a, a revelation of Christ's return in his kingdom. Now, at most of what we're going to see today, a lot of it is going to come from the Old Testament because there's so many more verses that describe, that illustrate, that teach us what is happening, what is going to go on in the, 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 the kingdom age, in the millennial reign of Christ. And so we're going we're gonna to be all over the place today, not just in this one particular chapter. This one particular chapter introduces us to us. This is where we see the term thousand years, millennium, millennium. Uh, six different times in this chapter, we see the phrase thousand years, thousand years, thousand years. All right. In the top of your, in the top of your notes, it says Luke 1, 31, verse, uh, or, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 31 and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. This is the angel speaking to Mary about Jesus. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give him. The Lord God, God the Father, shall give him the what? Throne. throne. Say it with me. The throne. throne of his father, David. Now, where was David's throne? Was it in heaven or was it on earth? It was on earth. Uh, there are many people, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I cannot tell you how many hours of sermons and messages and lessons and, and, and commentaries I've read and, and, and articles I've read upon this. And there's so many false teachers out there and there's so many people trying to say that this is a spiritual thing, that this is, this is the thousand years is not literal, it's just, it's, it's just a typology and all this kind of junk. Uh, no, no, no. He's going to get the throne of David. David's throne was on this earth. It was not in heaven. Are y'all with me? Say amen. amen. It was on this earth. It was in Jerusalem. He will get the throne of his father, David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. In this kingdom, there shall be no end. Isaiah 9, 6 describes it. The prophet tells us about it. For unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment, with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. All right, that's describing him. Psalm 72, 11 says, Ye, uh, Yea, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. All right, now, the first thing we see in Revelation, and let's just go through our notes here. The first thing we see in Revelation chapter 20, it says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should not what? Deceive that he should deceive the nations no more. Amen. Now, but there's going to be a brief time where we'll, uh, maybe if we get time, we'll get to that. But we will teach it before it's over with. Uh, uh, but in the, in the thousand year reign, he's going to be bound. He's going to be incapacitated, if you will. He's going to be where he cannot influence us. He cannot tempt us. He cannot deceive us. Now, why is that such a big deal? Why is that such a big deal? Let me give you a few things underneath the restraining of Satan. All right. The first thing that we're going to see, the first thing that takes place that begins the, the, the kingdom age and the millennial reign is the restraint of Satan. And, and why that's so important. You know, as I was reading this and studying this, it, it, it really, it really dawned on me and I began to see how much influence Satan has on the wickedness of this world, of society, our problems, our issues, our struggles. You know, the, 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 old, the, the old cliche and the old word, the devil made me do it. You know, there, there is so much to that. 
And I think sometimes we don't take it seriously enough. We don't take Peter's warning seriously enough. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion. He roams about seeking whom he may devour. And I, we, we need to take him seriously. Watch this right here. First of all, we see some of his titles. Some of his titles. Some of them are given in these verses. We see the word dragon. The word dragon, he's called a dragon. And, and, and by the way, when you see dragon, we, we, listen, don't think of uh, cartoon characters. Don't think of Disney movies. Don't think of uh, a playful little creature. A dragon was vicious. A, we, we need to look at something that is ferocious, very malicious. He was called a dragon because of his horrible cruelty and villainy. He was called a serpent. Because of his maliciousness, his guile, his deception. Deception. He's a serpent. It's called the devil because he's the arch tempter of man. Satan, because he's the accuser of the brethren. A murderer. A murderer because he's responsible for all deaths. Think about that a minute. Think about that a minute. All murder, all deaths is, is, is he is, he has some kind of fingerprints on everybody's death. Because in the very beginning, when he, he influenced and he deceived and he tempted Adam and Eve to sin, because of one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. So he's influenced and he's, he's been responsible for all death that we see, specifically murder, a liar. He's the instigator of all truths, all untruths. He's the accuser. He's the instigator of all blame. John 8, Jesus is speaking about him. And he says, ye are of your father, the devil. In the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And he abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Revelation 12, verse 10 says, And I heard a loud voice from Heaven say in, saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. We see his titles and, and we see his activities. What are some of his activities in the local church today? In the age of grace, in the age of the church? Well, in Acts 5, 3, we learn that he fills the heart of church members to lie. To lie. He blinds the minds of sinners, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. He attacks the local church, 2 Corinthians eleven three. 3. He hinders God's servants from accomplishing God's will, 1 Thessalonians 2, 18. He takes men captive, 2 Timothy 2, 26. He throws Christians into prison and influences their imprisonment, Revelation 2, 10. He destroys the flesh of believers, 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 5. He hunts people down like a roaring lion. 1 Peter 5, 8. There is a lot. Satan's fingerprints is on so much evil. All evil. All wickedness. Amen. Now, so before Jesus begins his rule, before he begins his reign, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to restrain the main influencer, the main instigator, of the majority of the wickedness that we see in this world. Somebody say amen. amen. So we see the restraining of Satan and we see why we, he needs to be restrained. Then secondly, secondly, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that this is going to be the exact chronological order, okay? Now we know that's going to happen first, all right? But after this, these are things that are going to take place in the millennial reign. I'm not saying this is the exact chronological order, but it's going to take place. It may take place simultaneously, but it's going to take place. This is what we see. All right. Secondly, we not only see the restraint of the instigator, the influencer, the main deceiver, the main uh, architect behind the evil in the society and the evil culture that we have to live in. But then the second thing we see, there's going to be a refreshing reign. There's going to be a refreshing rain. And I know what you're thinking. Big deal. Oh, it's going to be a big deal. I was sitting in, I was sitting, I, I, I lay sod. I lay sod about two weeks ago, I think it was. Uh, two weeks ago. 
and I've been, I've been killing myself trying to water that stuff to keep it alive. I mean, we don't have no drought till the preacher lays sod. Are y'all with me? I'm sitting in my office today. I'm sitting in my office today, and I hear this deluge. I mean, I hear it coming down. I said, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I looked on my radar on my phone to see if it was raining at the house, and it was, it, 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 it was uh, I, I don't think so. So I text my wife and I said, baby, is it, is, it, is it raining at the house? She said, no. <laughs> that broke my heart. Now, you say, why is, why is rain such a big deal? If you, if you lived in the desert, you would appreciate rain. Now, watch this. Watch this. If you go through the tribulation period, you appreciate rain. During the seven years of tribulation, rain will be withheld. How many of y'all know that rain was a type of blessing? How many of y'all realize that God would withhold blessing because of sin? If God's people sinned and they lived in rebellion, he would shut up the heavens that there be no rain. Now watch. During the seven years of tribulation, the rain will be withheld. Plus the scorching sun, the poisoning of the waters, the deforestation of the earth because of the fires will cause the entire planet to become a desolate wilderness. In other words, if you, if you was to look at Israel, the wilderness area, if you was to drive, if you was to drive from the Dead Sea to, to Jerusalem, Dead Sea to Jericho to Jerusalem, you would see sand and rocks and heat and desolate just desolate air. I mean, we, we, you, you'll go by and, and you'll see Bedouin shepherds out there and goats. And I still to this day don't know what them goats are eating. But they out there. And it's desert. It's desolate. It's wilderness. That is what the tribulation period is going to do to this planet. I mean, we read it just a couple of weeks ago. Y'all remember we went through the tribulation. third of the earth's forests and grass and all green things are going to be burnt up. No rain. There's going, to be, there's going to be such a devastation, but the moment Satan is bound, it's going to start raining. Watch this. <laughs> a helping rain. <clears throat> a helping rain. Joel chapter 2, verse 23. Be glad then. Be glad then, children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. You know what that means? The whole season worth of rain that they normally get, God's going to give you in the first month. Did y'all see that? Watch this. Watch this. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the pommel worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God and uh, 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 that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Ezekiel 34, 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a... And I will cause the... To come down in his season, and there shall be. Somebody say amen. amen. Now let me let me help you with something. Now you guys, uh, Willie G, Joy, you were you were there. The very first time I went to Israel, it, it there was a dry spell, and 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 it, even though it was in the rainy season, it was it was normal. It was it the the, the desert looked normal. But if y'all remember, I don't know if y'all remember this, but they had an unusually wet time when we went last time. And as we were going, you could see, you could see little specks and little, little hints here and little there in the middle of the wilderness, there was some green popping up. And, and I, and, and until he mentioned, I didn't catch it, but when, when you focused on it, you could see it. You could see grass here and little grass there. In other words, that whole desert area that you see, when you look out across Saudi Arabia and you look out across all of that there, you think, man, nothing ever grow there, not till it rains. And when it starts raining, grass will grow anywhere rain falls. 
And the, I'm, I'm going to get to it in a minute. Y'all, y'all ain't even helping me. I, I'm trying to help you, but you ain't helping me. Listen, there's going to be a refreshing rain, a helping rain. But not only a helping rain, there's going to be a healing river. Write that down. A healing river. Now, we've already discussed this, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. This is that river that's coming out from, the, from the, 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 the Mount of God, the Mount Zion, out from under the temple. Are y'all with me? One site, you remember, there's going to be an earthquake. Uh, 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 the, the Mount of Olives is going to split. There's going to be a river that runs down to the Jordan, down to the Dead Sea, uh, a river that runs uh, west to uh, the Mediterranean Sea. How many of y'all remember? Say amen. amen. Now watch this. Joel 3.18. It shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine. The hills shall flow with milk. The rivers of Judah shall flow with waters and a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord and shall water the valley of Shittim. Zechariah 14, 6. And it shall be in that day that the living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. Shall it be? Now, what are we going to see? We're going to see a refreshing rain, and God is going to send. Now, I read one commentary that said that that water is going to be so pure and so life-giving. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind, if you remember going through the tribulation period, that the majority of the fresh water on this earth will be contaminated, and it will be bitter, and it will be undrinkable. But he believes that the water coming out of the temple is going to heal all of the, all of the fresh water on this planet that's going to come out of there. What's happening? God is going to begin restoring this earth. Amen. Are y'all with me? Say amen. amen. Now, everybody check your phones. Check your phones. You're getting an alert. It's an amber alert, a blue alert, some kind of alert. Now, turn them off. <laughs> all right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Wait till you're doing that and you're about half asleep in the highway and that thing goes off. Makes you run off the road. Amen. <laughs> All right. So, so number one, let's, let's, let's go quick. Let's go quick. Number one there. First, there is a restraining of the devil. Amen. Restraining of the devil. Number two, there's a refreshing rain. There's a refreshing rain. How many of y'all have ever seen a, how many of y'all have ever seen a, 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 a burnt forest or a, where there was a forest fire and then, you know, when the season changes and the rain begins and those sprouts come up. That's how I imagine it. That's how I imagine this earth coming and the earth re-blooming and, and refreshing itself, okay? So, number three. Number three, there's a reversal of the majority of the curse. There's a... <laughs> y'all killing me, people. There's a reversal of the curse, all right? Uh, now... What does that entail? What does that entail? How many of y'all remember Genesis when man fell? How many of y'all remember Genesis when man fell? And God cursed them, cursed the earth, all right? Not just, not just man, not just man. Now he's going to have to die. Now he's going to have to die. The wages of sin is? It is appointed unto man wants to? Okay, now that's part of it. That's not necessarily going to be taken away, all right? There will be people die during the millennial reign. But there was other things that came. He's going to have to work by the sweat of his brow. In other words, work will not be enjoyable anymore. It's going to be laborious. It's going to be difficult. He's going to have a hard time. Because of his sin and his disobedience, there comes briars and thorns and thistles and weeds. And all the farmers see it. All of that, all of that's part of the curse. Cancer is part of the curse. Heart disease, part of the curse. Diabetes, part of the curse. All these things that we struggle with, we have issues with. But watch what's going to take place. Watch what's going to take place. There's going to be a reversal of the curse in creation. Write that down. In creation. Isaiah 55, 12. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn, instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. It shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall be cut off. God's going to change. God's going to change the order. 
And it's going to go back. Basically what he's doing, he's reverting back to the Garden of Eden, the way it was. We see creation. Then we see the crops. All right, everybody grab your phone. Everybody grab your phone and silence it or turn it off, whatever you got to do. All right, we good? All right, here we go, here we go. Crops, write the word crops down. Write the word crops down. God's going to change, God's going to change the crops. Uh, the biggest gamblers on this earth are farmers. <laughs> do I have a witness, Brother Mark? They, they invest, invest money hoping and praying that they're going to get the rain and they're going to have a good harvest, right? And, and, and by the way, did y'all get any rain? Did y'all get any rain? Oh, you ain't prayed. We got to pray, Mark. Oh, we need to pray. Listen, listen, watch this. Watch this, what it's going to say about the crops. You're going to like this, Brother Mark. This is going to last, especially the last one. Isaiah 30, verse 23. Then shall he give the rain of the seed, and thou shalt sow the ground with all, and bread of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fat and plenteous. In that day shall thy cattle feed in large pastures. Isaiah 35, 1. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. The desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Psalm 67, 6, then shall the earth yield her increase and God, even our God shall bless us. Watch this one. Watch this one. This is great. Amos 9, 13, behold, the days come. Here you go, Mark, right here. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Now, let me explain what that means. The plowman shall catch up with the reaper. What that means is we had in modern day right now, Mark is in the combine. He is reaping the corn, and Perry and Rodney's right behind him and have caught up with him plowing, planting the new ground, saying, come on, pops, we're burning daylight. In other words, there's not, going to be, there's not going to be planting in a long season and we only get... No, no, you're going to start planting right after you go to... It's just going to be that fast of a turnaround. Can you imagine the abundance of food, the abundance of prosperity, the abundance of blessing that that's going to be? And it's going to be awesome. But y'all going to work harder than y'all working now, Mark. Amen. Don't tell Perry and them that. They're going to want to quit and go work in a factory somewhere. Amen. The plowman's going to catch up with the reaper. That's so awesome. That's the way it's supposed to have been in the beginning. What a blessing. The crops are going to be so different. And, you know, I kind of... I kind of threw some of y'all for a loop last week. I done heard from several people. Preacher, you mean tell me we're going to have to work during the millennial reign? I hate to break it to you, y'all, but there was work before the curse. God gave Adam a job before he ever fell. But here's going to be the difference. Let me kind of set some of y'all at ease, all right? Let me set some of y'all at ease. The difference is, is you're going to like it this time around. Okay? The curse has made you hate work and hate all of this. It's not going to be that way. I I heard a wise man say this, and I don't know if it's always possible, but a wise man, he, he he, he told his kids, he said, figure out something you enjoy and then figure out how to get paid for it. And you'll never work a day in your life. That's what it's going to be like. You're going to enjoy what you do because Listen, that jerk that you work for, he's not going to be your boss anymore. The sweet Lord Jesus Christ is going to be your boss. And if your boss is in this house tonight, he's a great person. All right, Joy. Amen. No offense, Willie. Amen. All I know, you need to tighten up. Hey. Are y'all with me? 
And, and let me say this too. Why we're, why we're at it, I know there's no way in God's name we're going to finish all this, but I, I said something last week that's bothered me ever since last week. And, 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 and I, I, want to, I want to make sure everybody understands what I mean when I say this. I, I, I said something about, you know, if you're not serving God, you're going to be a janitor uh, uh, in the millennium. And, and it, the way that sounded is like there's something wrong with being a janitor. There ain't nothing wrong. There is no dishonor in any work at all. I don't care what you are. I don't care what you do. If you're working, that's honorable. And so I want that. I, I just, I probably didn't need to say that, but I did. I, for my own, I want you to know, I don't care what you do. If you're serving, if you're working, that's honorable. That's better than anybody sitting on the couch collecting money when they could be working. I need a witness. The point I was trying to make is there's a difference in that and being a king. Does everybody understand that? All right, you're going to be a king, and we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, all right? So when it comes to the curse, creation is going to be different. The thorns and the thistles that we have to deal with, the, 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 the fleas and the ticks and the bugs and the, and the, and the mosquitoes, all that's, going to be, all that's going to be dealt with. God's going to prosper the crops and the, and the farmers. And I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what all the manufacturing is going to be, uh, but I do know that there's going to be a great increase in farming, a great increase in farming. There's going to be a, a, complete, a complete layoff, all you in the military and all you in the military establishment that's in, in the works of the arts and all that, y'all going to be unemployed. That's what it says. It says, you shall beat your swords into plowshares. So you're going to go from building missiles to building tractors. Now, you're not necessarily going to be unemployed, but you're going to be changing what you're creating. God's going to change all of that. God's going to change all of that. And, and I'll tell you what, if, if, if you're going to have to plow right after you plant or, or, or cut your corn, we're going to need more tractors. Amen. Watch this. The conditions, the conditions, Isaiah 35, Isaiah 35. Look what it says. Then the eyes of the blind shall be open. And the ears of the deaf shall be Unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. Wow. Man, what a time that's going to be. Amen. The conditions of humanity. Now, let me, let me clarify this. Let me clarify this. That point in that verse has nothing to do with you guys. Okay? Has nothing to do with you guys. You say, why, why does it have nothing to do with us? Because you're going to have a glorified body. You're going to have a perfect body. You're going to be immortal. This is for those who have survived the tribulation and who will have children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren during the tribulation who are still mortal. If you are part of the body of Christ, you're going to be raptured before the tribulation period, come back after the tribulation period, and rule and reign with Christ with an immortal body. So although we can shout about this, you're already going to be fixed. Does everybody understand that? Say amen. amen. All right. All right. Where are we at? Four. All right. Restoration of life. Restoration of life. There's going to be a restoration of life. In what way? What, what, what part of life? Well, first of all, there's going to be a restoration of peace. Isn't that what everybody's crying for right now? Peace. We want peace. We're at peace. There's going to be peace in humanity. <clears throat> peace in humanity. Micah 4.3. Micah 4.3. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into... And their spears into... Watch this now. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Isn't that great? Isaiah 32, 17. And the work of righteousness, and that's going to be a righteous reign by a righteous king. And because of this righteousness, what does it say? It shall be peace. And the effect of righteous, quiet righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Now, now what, what does that mean? If somebody's acting righteous, 
You don't have to pull a gun on them. If everybody's going to act righteous, you don't have to lock your doors because they ain't going to steal nothing. Did you see where this is going? We're going to be in a righteous environment created and kept that way by a king. Now, and my people, my people shall dwell in peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. Boy, I, I, just, look, just look at the news. Two more, two more cops shot today. A baby, a baby shot in the head in Chicago. People are just being slaughtered in Chicago. But we're, there's coming a day when there's going to be peace in humanity. They shall learn war no more. But there's also going to be peace in the animal kingdom. There's going to be peace in the animal kingdom. Isaiah 11, 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. Now, a kid is a baby goat, all right? And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. That's a little calf. And a little child shall lead them. Imagine that. Imagine a wolf and a leopard and a, and a, and a, a, a powerful lion and a little child leading them around town. The sucking child shall play on the hole of an asp, as a poisonous creature, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den, another poisonous creature. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In other words, all of creation is going to be... Now think about this. Think about this. One man sinned. Man did it. A A Adam did it. But it wasn't just humanity that got cursed. Even the animal kingdom got cursed. They were all herbivores before this took place. So it did not just bring chaos and disorder in the realm of humanity, but it brought chaos and disorder in the realm of the animal kingdom. They began to kill each other. They're killing each other just like we're killing each other. And according to Romans, according to Romans, they, creation begs to be cut loose from this curse. It, the, the word, King James word, is groaning. Groaning to be delivered. And one day in the millennial reign, the earth will be. The earth will be. Think of this, verse 7. The cow and the bear shall feed. The, their young ones shall lie down together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. Pretty cool. Watch this. There's not only going to be a restoration of peace, but there's going to be a restoration of prolonged days. Prolonged days. How many of y'all remember reading in Genesis before the flood how long people lived? Yeah. Right? Six, seven hundred, one even... 900 years, Methuselah, all this long, long, prolonged days. Isaiah 65, 20, watch what it says. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old. What does that mean? It means if you die at a hundred, they're going to say, he was just a baby. That's what it's saying. Be, yeah, Miss Diane says, I'm in. I'm ready for that. Just a child. If you, if you die at 100 years old, you will be considered a child. All right? But the sinner being 100 years old shall be a curse. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. And they shall not build another and another inhabit. In other words, they're going to be able to enjoy what they have. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my, my people. In other words, everybody knows how long a tree lives. All right? So there's going to be prolonged days. Uh, some people believe that, that after the flood, it changed the atmosphere and, and the, the lifespan of everybody was greatly shortened. 
And God's going to take it back before that. And, and people are going to live long days. Long days. Prolonged days. So health is going to change. Man, you can, can you imagine? Everybody's acting right. Everybody's acting righteous. Uh, uh, so then, then you live in a, a society in, the, in an atmosphere where God's changed the curse around. So there's no diabetes. There's no heart disease. There's no cancer can you imagine how long people are going to be able to live? So we see that's going to be a great thing. There's restoration of life. But then number five, number five, there's going to be some responsibilities of priest kings. There's going to be some responsibilities of priest kings. That's you and me, guys, by the way, if you didn't know. We're kings and priests. A king rules, a priest represents. I didn't put that in your notes, but it'd be good for you to write that down. A king rules and judges, if you will. A priest represents. In other words, the priest in the Old Testament was God's representative to the people and the people's representative to God. If that makes sense, say amen. amen. And so that's what we will be. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment. Judgment was given unto them. In other words, there's still going to be courtrooms because people are going to, they're still going to have disputes, disagreements, but they're going to come to the glorified Christians who were born again, who are reigning with Christ. Are y'all with me? In other words, everybody's not going to have to fly to Jerusalem to have a meeting with Jesus. They're going to sit in your courtroom where you are reigning and you are judging and you are ruling as a representative of the king in Jerusalem. Are y'all with me? Now watch, watch. Revelation 26. But they shall be... Revelation 26. At the, at, 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 I didn't put that whole... Let's see. Right here. But, but they shall be... Say it with me. But they shall be... Priests of God and of Christ and shall, how long? A thousand years. Now, what does a king do? He, he rules or judges, okay? But a priest represents, okay? All right, now, Revelation 1, 6. Revelation 1, 6. And hath made us. Now, John's writing this. John's part of the church, right? He's part of the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. So he's, he's in reference to us. So we can say to us is us. Amen. Amen. And hath made us. us kings and Priest. unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Revelation 5, 9. Revelation 5, 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain. And has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall, we shall reign on the earth. We're going to reign on the earth. All of God's people are going to be scattered across this whole earth in different cities, in different places, in different towns, in different villages. Reigning with Christ. Representing him. Now, here's something very important. Our responsibilities will be determined by present faithfulness. Who you rule, who you judge, and the responsibilities you have in the millennial reign of Christ will be determined by your faithfulness right now. Now, turn with me. Turn with me to Luke chapter 19 and do it quick. Do it quick. I think we're going to make it, guys, if y'all hurry. Jesus, he talks about this, and he tries to help us understand it, how it's going to be. Luke 19. How many of y'all know God has, given you, God has given you natural abilities and talents, and then after you get saved, you have spiritual gifts? Does everybody understand that? How many of y'all know God's going to hold you accountable to how you use them? Let me explain. Luke 19, 11. 
And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. You know, a lot of the disciples, they did. They thought that Jesus was going to just ascend the throne right then, kick the Romans out, and hey, let's party on. Here we go. Let's go. But Jesus knew there's going to be an extended time, and there has been. All right? Now, so he wants to explain to them. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman, that would be Jesus, went into a far country to receive for himself a and to return. Jesus came here. He established a kingdom. He bought and paid for it on the cross. Are y'all with me? Then he returned to heaven. But this is what, this is the deal. He called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, occupy. In other words, use this. Use this. Occupy till I come. What are we doing right now? We're waiting on the nobleman. We're waiting on Jesus to come, but we're supposed to be occupying. We're supposed to be using what he has given us for his kingdom, for his benefit, for his service. Are y'all with me? Say amen. amen. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Guess what? There's a ton of people doing that right now. There's a ton of people doing it. They're rioting right now in Washington. They're rioting in big major cities all over the place. They do not want Jesus to rule over them. But there are faithful servants that are gathering all over America right now, all over the world, who are wanting to occupy. Thank the Lord. Jesus is saying this. We're not going to have a perfect environment right now. There's going to be people that's not going to like what we do. There's going to, not, there's going to be people that's not going to like what we stand for and what we believe in. And it came to pass that when he was returned, that means Jesus is coming back. Amen. Amen. Having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trade. How did they use what he gave them? Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained 10 pounds. And he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful. faithful. There's the key word. Thou hast been faithful faithful in a very little. Have thou what? Over? Ten cities. Ten cities. cities. Because you were faithful now, because you were faithful with what I gave you, even if it was a little bit, I'm going to reward you. Imagine that. God's reward is more responsibility. What a blessing. Look, look. And the second came, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said, likewise to him, be thou also over five cities. And another came saying, Lord, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee because thou art an austere man. In other words, we, I knew you was serious. I knew you were stern. I knew you were hard. Thou takest up that that thou layest not down and reapest thou that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, take up, taking up that I laid not down and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou that my money into the bank that at my coming I might have required my own with you. In other words, the very least you could have done is got some interest off of it. And he said unto them that stood by, take from him, say that with me, thy pound and give it to him that hath. And they said unto him, Lord, he had 10 pounds. He had 10 pounds. Why are we giving him the one? He's already got a bunch of them. From here we see Jesus is not socialist or communist. Yeah, anyway. For I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Let me, let me just make it in really simple terms. You're going to have nothing. If God cannot trust you with what he has given you now, he will not be able to trust you with what he wants to give you in his kingdom. 
This guy was not willing to work. He was not willing to use. He was not willing to incorporate, invest what God has done. Did you notice, did you notice that the nobleman didn't say, because of your success, I'm going to... He didn't say that, did he? What did he say? Faithful. Because you were... Everybody might not be a success in everybody's eyes, but guess what everybody can be? We can all be faithful. We might not all can give big offerings. We may not all can volunteer hours and hours and hours of service. We may not all can do what a lot of people can do, but we can do what we can do. God's not asking anything from us that we can't do. Because if we couldn't do it, he wouldn't have asked us to do it. And if he didn't expect you to use what he gave you, he wouldn't have gave it to you. And mark it down. He's going to ask what you did with it. And I know, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. As long as I don't go to hell, that's fine. I don't have to rule over no city as long as I ain't. You ain't going to say that then. Because it is going to be such an honor and such a blessing to reign with Christ. To reign with Christ. Anyway, watch this. The rule and worship of the king of kings. Boy, I saw all them red letters. And I thought that was the clock. <laughs> I'm about to pitch a fit. Amen. Number six, the rule and worship of the king. The king of kings. First of all, don't you see his government? How's he going to rule? Now, this is going to be a surprise to some of you guys, so I'm going to just warn you. Put your seatbelt on. Psalms chapter 2 describes this government a little bit. You remember what it said in Isaiah? And the government shall be upon his shoulders. In other words, he is going to be solely responsible for the government of the planet. He's not just going to rule Israel. He's going to rule the world. The capital will be Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be the head and not the tail. Jerusalem will be the, the nation of all nations, but he's going to rule the world. Now watch this. Watch this. Psalms 2, 7. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, thou art my son. So God the Father speaking to God the Son. He's saying, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me. Son, ask me. And I'll give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise. Now, now the father turns to the kings of this world. Now he was talking to his son and telling his son what he's going to do for him, what he's going to give him. Now he turns to the kings of this earth. Watch what he tells them. Be wise. You better educate yourself. That's what he's saying. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son. You better have, he said, you better have a good relationship with my boy. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. And ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. That is talking about the millennial reign. Listen, Revelation 12, 5. She brought forth a man child who was to, let me back up, let me back up because I got excited and was talking too much, all right? Verse 9, thou, verse 9 of Psalm 2, look back up in your notes. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, okay? Revelation 12, 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a revelation 19, 15 out of his mouth go the sharp sword and with it, he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a anybody catching anything rod of iron, rod of iron, rod of iron, rod of iron. Okay. Well, now what's that about? What does it mean to rule with a rod of iron? You, you know, that phrase, you know, walk softly, but carry a right. Watch this. 
Rod of iron means there's not going to be any delays in bringing justice. No long waits for trials. No long waits for sentences to be carried out. There will be immediate justice based upon the holy reign and judgment of King Jesus. Immediate. Everything will be dealt with immediately. Every wrong, every, every disobedient act, every act of, any kind of act of rebellion, it'll be immediate. Immediate. Now watch. This is, this, I need you to listen because I didn't print this because I didn't have enough space. So just listen real good right here, okay? Unregenerate human nature will remain unchanged. Even though humanity will not have the part of the curse that causes disease, and he will live a long time, he will still by nature be unregenerate and have a sin nature. Does everybody understand that? Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, preacher, you said everybody's going to be redeemed that go into the kingdom. That's true. But guess what? They're going to have babies. How many of of y'all know in here? Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. This is important. How many of y'all know God don't have no grandchildren? God don't have no grandchildren. God only has children. What does that mean? When my child was born, she didn't get in because I was in. She had to become a child of God like I had to become a child of God. I didn't become a child of God because my father was saved. I didn't inherit salvation. The only thing I got from my daddy was an unregenerate sin nature. Y'all with me? And even though everybody's going to be redeemed that goes into the kingdom, they're going to have children who are going to have children, who are going to have children, who are going to have children. Imagine how many generations after a thousand years. Okay? And they're all going to have an unregenerate nature. Does everybody everybody follow me right there? They're still going to have the sin nature. Now watch. Sin will still be present, though, though, much of it is outward manifestation will be restrained. In other words, the outward acts of sin will be restrained because of a rod of iron. Are y'all with me? Discontent and wickedness will not be eradicated from the hearts of men, but will be kept beneath the surface by means of the Rod rod of iron. Multitudes, and we see this in Psalms 18, uh, Psalms 110, Psalm 72. Multitudes, multitudes will have a feigned obedience. In other words, it's fake. They will bow down, but inside they're standing up. Y'all with me? Multitudes. This feigned obedience, dis- or yes, feigned obedience, fake obedience, fake submission, fake worship will be the product of power, not grace. We obey because of grace. In other words, all right, it's, it's like a maturity thing. When your kids are small, they obey you because you're going to beat the devil out of them. But when they mature to a point, they obey you because they want to please you. Because they love you. Now, now, as Christians, as a mature Christian, a baby Christian may not do this, but as a mature Christian, we don't serve God because we're afraid he's going to bring the belt out on us. We serve him because we love him. And we want to please him. And we submit to him because we love him and we want to honor him. But in the, listen, they're still going to submit. And they're still going to act right, but they don't want to. Is everybody with me on that? Now watch. Now watch. Their obedience will be the product of power. They're afraid of that rod of iron. That had nothing to do with grace. It will be a fruit of fear, not love. In Psalm 72, which gives a graphic picture of millennial conditions, we read, They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him and his enemies. See, Christ is going to have enemies during the millennial reign. Even even though they're faking submission and faking worship, they're still his enemy. It says they shall lick the dust. What licking the dust means they're going to fall prostrate. In other words, they're going to bow down like they're worshiping, but they're his enemy. 
<clears throat> we are told in Psalms 110 too. Let me read it. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. That's Psalms 110 too. It says in Psalm 149, wherein the children of Zion are bidden to be joyful in their king. We are told that his saints, that's us, watch this, we will execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. In other words, we're going to have us a little rod too. That's what that means, okay? These verses do not conflict with those scriptures which speak of great blessings, spiritual as well as temporal, coming upon the Gentiles during the millennium. But warn us that the kingdom age is not the perfect state and that while most, if not all, will worship outwardly, yet at heart, many are still going to be enemies of the Lord. That's amazing. Psalm 72, 7. In, in his days shall the righteous flourish in the abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. He shall have dominion from sea to sea and from the river unto the ends of the earth. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him and his enemies shall lick the dust. They're going to bow like they're worshiping, but it will be fake. It will be fake. Then we see his worship. Let's look at his worship. And by the way, that's how the devil is going to deceive a ton of people when he's turned loose. Are y'all with me? Oh. We're in the red, but let's, let's go fast. I think we're almost done, right? His worship. Two things. Write this down. The law is going to be taught from Jerusalem. The law is going to be taught from Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the last days, Isaiah 2, 2. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. In other words, Jesus is going to sit up on his throne and just teach. Can you imagine being able to go and sit in a session right in Jerusalem and hear him teach personally? Zechariah 8, 20. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, it shall come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities. They're going to come from all over the world. And by the way, if you don't think that's possible, go to Jerusalem with me. They're already coming from all over the world. And he ain't even got there yet. One of the most moving things that I ever experienced in the, in the Holy Land, and I hope y'all get to go with me. I want y'all to go with me. I was at the place where Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, Mr. Brown, this is the first time I went when I was with you guys. Everybody was taking pictures of the, the beautiful church they built there and the flowers and the birds. And I got a little video, and you can hear the birds chirping in the Sea of Galilee. It's the most beautiful picture. And I'm standing in an asphalt-paved parking lot staring at thousands of buses crying my eyes out. At buses in parking lot. You say, what in the world's wrong with you? That still remains to be seen. I'm not sure about that, but I was passing all those buses. And all those buses had a flag in the windshield of the nation that they came from. And it was a different nation after different nation after different nation after different nation after different nation. I mean, I was sitting there and the Holy Spirit just reminded me, if I be lifted up, I will draw all nations. And they're already going. It says they shall come from the inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. He said, I'm going to go with you. Yea, many people and strong nations shall, seek, shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. 
Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold of all languages and uh, out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for ye, we have heard that God is with you. The law will be taught. Number two, the Lord will be praised. Watch this. I love this one. Isaiah 35, 8. And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness, the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransom of the Lord shall return. And come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Amen. Psalm twenty-two, twenty-seven. 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord. And he is the governor. Among the nation. nation. It's going to be an incredible time. Look at me, everybody. I didn't get a chance to put in there the millennial temple, parts of the, the millennial worship that will be taking place. Uh, but I do want to tell you this so you don't go home wondering. You say, preacher, didn't we read a while ago in the end that Satan's going to be cut loose one more time? We did. We did. And he's going to deceive millions and millions of people. All right. This is going to prove two things. This is going to prove two things. Hell will not change anybody. I've heard preachers over the centuries, over the years, over time, from tapes and books and, and conferences and places I've been, Oh, if people were in hell, if they could just have one more chance, and they, no, they won't. Hell doesn't change anybody. So how do you know? Because the devil came out doing the same thing he was doing when he got sent there. He came out and deceived. How many of y'all know that the rich man in hell, he lift up his eyes being in torment? Not one time did he beg for forgiveness. Not one time did he try to make things right with God. You know, the only thing he cared about was the torment he was in and didn't want his brothers to come there. The Bible clearly says people that are in hell right now, if they were brought back, still would not repent. That's one point. But here's the most important point. God is going to allow millions and millions and millions of people to be in a incredible environment. No temptation from Satan, the influencer, the murderer, the liar, the deceiver, the accuser of the brother. He will not be bothering anybody. They'll be on their own, but still in their heart, they're broken. And God is going to prove that man needs a savior. Because even with a righteous, perfect rule, a per every decision, can you imagine all the crooked judges we got in this world? And crooked lawyers and crooked politicians and crooked everything that's taking bribe. Can you imagine a judge who makes every single decision perfect? That's what they're going to live in. And they're still going to be deceived. Because they still will refuse. What did, what did he say? What did he say about the nobleman? His citizens do not want him to rule over them. That's the bottom line. People are in hell today because they refuse to have God rule over them. And all God's people say it.